beautiful face. How about a song? One of you must know one. Mr. Davos? You'll pray for a quick death. Sir Brienne? of the kings who are gone Jenny would dance with her ghosts the ones she had lost and the ones she had found and the ones who had loved her the most the ones who'd been gone for so very long she couldn't remember the names they spun her around on the damp old stones, spun away all her sorrow and pain. And she never wanted to leave, never wanted to leave, never wanted to leave, never wanted to leave. Never Never wanted to leave. Never wanted to leave. Wow. This video is wow. What do you say about that? Welcome back. It's your beef boy surprise. I'm back in the building. I'm glad to be here, man. I missed you guys, man. I know. I know. A lot of people were sending me messages and like, when are you going to drop another one? And I will drop it eventually, but sometimes Rich gets busy, you know, in, in different facets of his life. And, uh, you know, and sometimes, you know, you just got to kind of, you got to feel the people and I never want to reach out. And uh, if I'm not feeling the people, man, my eyes met, match my shirt. I know there's some people right now just like men and women and in between just like gushing right now bro just like dang i wish he'd look at me like that but but i am i'm looking at you like that i'm looking at you like that because i'm very proud of my fans and i'm very proud of what we've built here lonely uncle podcast got some gear out if you want to get your gear hit me up i'll get you some gear i need to get you some gear um we were brought in by Jenny of the Old Stone by Podrick. And uh, that was the scene right before the Battle of Winterfell, which I've been reading mixed reviews. I shouldn't even read reviews. Reviews are so stupid. Do you feel it? Do you like it? If you like it, then you're good. That's all that matters. Reading a stupid review is just so stupid. And I hate myself when sometimes I find myself influenced by it. I've gotten to the point now that I'll listen to an album or a song or an album, whatever, and then I'll go back and read the review later because sometimes I feel like it gets in my head as some kind of, you know, douche McAllister from, you know, New York City. Some big time writer doesn't like, you know, the new Foo Fighters album or the new Danzig album. Says it's not hitting on all cylinders or something. I'll let that get in my head sometimes. And sometimes I just have to go and just get the album and just listen to it man it is hot in here bro and i have not if you know me if you know rich rich does not like things that rich doesn't like turn it on your ac before may turn it on your heat ever in north carolina it doesn't get cold here anybody that complains about the winters in north carolina <sighs> just dude why are you complaining we don't even get cold it doesn't get cold here, so I honestly will go winters maybe not turning on my heat. It's unbelievable. And that's probably why I'm the lonely uncle. Ha <laughs> ha! Because I control my climate up in my cut. This behind me, you see that you see that stairwell? You see that is that crown molding or whatever? Top of the lawn. Top of the lawn. <laughs> Forked over mad bills. Mad bills for that. But you will see in my cut, people come over all the time. 
and say, God, it's hot or it's cold in this. And sometimes I give them my hoodie. You know, you, you know you're in a good relationship if your girl's wearing your hoodie. And I love hoodies, dude. <laughs> I got so many hoodies. And there's sometimes I, I go out and I'm, I'll be dating a girl and I'll give her my hoodie. And I know I might not ever see that hoodie again because I've been in, there's been situations where I just run. You ever been in a relationship where you just looked at it and there was that moment and you're like, run, run. And at any moment, she might have my hoodie on and I have to run, hit the door, blasting out. See that five nine flat speed? I, I man, I'd be actually happy if I ran a five nine right now. I'm getting down there though. I'm trying to look better. I'm getting in. I'm getting in. I'm getting in uh, shape for wedding season. And when I say wedding season, I don't mean my own wedding. I mean all my buddies second time around. Props to all my friends getting married for the second and third time. Good for you, dude. You found love. You get yourself out there and you make it happen. Because just like in the Battle of Winterfell, we don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow. We don't know. And I love that scene. I watched the Battle of Winterfell and I liked it a lot. But I love the second, the lead up. I'm always the guy that likes the lead up. Like, I learn more about to the lead up. And if you see that scene... When Podrick and them are all circling around and they kind of realize that tomorrow or tonight or whenever might be their last breath. It might be the last time they're alive or together. You really learn a lot about a person. And I was just kind of wondering in that kind of situation, number one, how would I react? And number two, what song would I like to sing? Or what would I sing? I'm hoping I would break out in verse. Like Project, or I hope and I just would take it in because it's an emotional moment. But that was Jenny of the Old Stone. I'm hoping I would, uh, you know, bring something similar to that. So props to that, and props to that amazing show. Um, you know, it's just incredible, man. I, I read something hilarious the other day, bro. There's this guy. <laughs> he was. The, it's Avengers are out, and you know, and uh, you got that, and you got Star Wars. The new Star Wars trailer came out, and people are just so stoked. Man, man, there was this, um, I don't think parents are, man, I had a friend tell me one time, said, man, I never was more proud than uh, of my daughter. And I was like, man, man, did she tell you she loved you? I was like, nah. Did she ride a bike for the first time? Nah. Did she do amazing in preschool? Nah. Uh, and I was just kind of a, a loss for it. Did she, did y'all put together good Mother's Day plans or something? He was like, nah. He said, my daughter looked at me and said, I want to see Avengers, Daddy, in the theater. And he said he started, like, kind of we weeping. Like, he started, we're well, not weeping, but uh, tearing up a little bit. And I was like, wow, that's what it's come down to, man. That's, that's you know, that's being proud, you know. So, you know, that's what, that's where we are right now. We're just proud, you know. Because it's a big part of our culture right now, and people, and that's making billions of dollars. But I read <laughs> some dude was in the movie theater line, like they're, you know, it's just dork central, dude. Dork central, bro. I mean, lines and lines and lines and lines of dorks all around the world. And I think this happened in Asia, I want to say. Yeah, in Asia, people were waiting in line for the Avengers, and this dude came out and spoiled who died, like yelled it. And proceededly, but right after, they proceeded to whoop his, the people in line that were waiting for hours, ready to watch it, beat that dude's ass to a pulp, dude. That's how, <laughs> and I was just like, it's real out there, man. That's when, that's when something, entertainment becomes real, you know? When it, when it, uh, you know, reflects back on life. And that, cause that's a hard hitter, and that's happening. You know what I'm saying? So that was absolutely incredibly funny. I read that, and I guess I do got whooped. And uh, he thought he was cute, and I know those kind of people. Those are the worst kind of people, you know. Cause even though that's a world of dorks, and just ah, oh, you know, that uh, the biggest nerds, and you know, people who rely on other things like that to make them happy, like too much. 
you know, those, I mean, they're, but you can't do that. You can't be that worst kind of person and spoil, you know, have a spoiler, especially if they're waiting in line. And I bet he thought he was cute. I bet he was trying to impress some chick and it would just like, it, bam, got his at whooped and good for them. That's when you just, as a police officer, you just kind of look the other way and you're like, well, you did give away the ending, you know? And, uh, you know, I think, man, one time I was, uh, this happened to me actually, or this happened to, you know, I was a part of this man. When I was young, I was a little hot headed and it was like 1990 something. And I, one of my favorite, uh, actors was Leonardo DiCaprio and he was in this movie and there was a big spoiler. Um, and it was called Titanic. And, uh, you know, I just heard that it was a really good movie. And before then there wasn't spoilers out. There wasn't like. Uh, you know, information that you could actually see on Twitter or like Snapchat or whatever it is. Um, and you know, you can open up your web page and they'll be like, it'll say spoiler alert, but then the article will proceedly say so and so dies or something, and you're just like, that wasn't. You didn't really give me the heads up there because my eyes are constantly are just gonna automatically scroll down. So I don't think people are very good hiding spoilers. So that's why I try to watch stuff live when I can. Um, sometimes I can, sometimes I can. But anyway, so I was in line, dude, and this is in the 90s, and I was listening to some raw ghetto boys, bro. Props to, hey, I'm looking after you, Bushwick Bill. I know you got that pancreatic cancer thinking about you, bro. Love the ghetto boys. This year, Halloween fit on the weekend. Me and ghetto boys are trick-or-treating. Robbing little kids for bags. To that old man got behind our rags. So we it, speeded up the pace. Took a look back. And he was right before my face. We be in for a squabble, no doubt. So I swung a hand to hit the dude in his mouth. He was going down, we planned. But this won't no ordinary man. This dude stood six or seven feet. That's the dude I be seeing in my sleep. So we triple teamed on him. Dropping them four four bees on him. The more I swung, the more blood flew. Then he disappeared, and my boys disappeared too. And I felt just like a fiend. It wasn't even close to Halloween. It was dark as death on the street. My hands were all bloody, punching on the concrete. God dang, homie. My mind is playing tricks on me, homie. But that was fire back in the day, so... Thinking about him for sure. But anyway, I was in, I mean, I was just all riled up. And I was like, man, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. I love Kate Winslet. Um, we were about to go see this movie called Titanic. And uh, there was major spoilers. And, uh, man, we were in line and I was chilling with my girl. You know, back then I was on, I was dating on the regular, man. I had a, you know, how high school dating is, man. Actually, I wasn't, I really, I think I was with my friends probably. I was definitely with my dude friends. I definitely didn't have girls in high school. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, but anyway, some dude came out, and I'm pretty sure everybody's seen this movie by now. But he revealed a big pot spo- or um, plot spoiler. I was waiting in line because the lines were thick because this was a blockbuster, and the dude told everybody in line what happened, and it, I was crushed. Um, I got mad. I might have said a couple dirty words, but. He, I was sitting in that line, and he told everybody that the a Titanic boat, unfortunately, it was a big boat in the 1900s, and it actually sank. And I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I thought it was going to be a movie about, you know, that that new Titanic hitter that, you know, was really big. A bunch of right, rich white folks got on, and you know, they came over and basically played the piano and sang and drank and had a good merry time and maybe. You know, Leo fell in love with a girl and they, you know, they get to their destination and they move off and they have kids and it's all happy. But this dude spoiled it and said that uh, the, 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 the boat sank, the Titanic, and I was I was crushed. Uh, didn't even say spoiler alert and he was trying definitely trying to impress his friends and uh, I definitely didn't bow up or do anything, even though I wanted to, and in my mind, I was probably all riled up, because I was listening to that devil's music, you know, so, um, but anyway, you know, that's what, that's what that is, you know, for real, so, um, saw something else in the news that was funny, 
uh, I saw this. So, you know, bachelor, bachelor, bachelor parties and bachelorette parties are a big thing. And what ends up happening is uh, all these dudes get together, and usually it might, could be women, and they celebrate the last weekend of freedom. And they usually have these things called, like, the girls that get together and they be like, you know, men ain't, you know, men ain't anything. Or, or I don't know. It's like, it's kind of, it's really ridiculous, actually, when you think about it. And I never, ever felt good being a part of it. Or actually witnessing someone else being a part of it. Because <laughs> with the bachelorette party, you always see that girl, too, that are just, they're just doing it because they're a good friend. They don't want to be that person not to go. But you can see their facial expression like, oh, this is the worst. Drinking out of penis straws, you know, just like sipping on those hitters, like a little bit too aggressively. And you're like, what? You know, and they got their little hats on. And sometimes they got a dumb list and they got to like, you know, uh, you got a man bun. I need to pull on it and, and you know, sing a song. And they got on their stupid list and they check it off. And, you know, and they degrade, you know, they degrade men basically what they do there they make me feel you know inferior but that's what they do but anyway there was this hilarious clip because the draft took place props to my main people from wake forest who uh actually were drafted at, uh you know dexter lawrence going to the giants um and then bryce love going to no other than the red skin is um looking forward to them best of luck to those guys great kids moving forward Kind of neat, you know, to have a couple people from your hometown represent, especially fine young men of that caliber. They're going to work their butt off, and, you know, they're going to be a big part of that that division. Playing each other twice a week or twice a year, that's going to be lovely, you know, so props to them. But anyway, they had this, and these girls, bachelorette, they were, they were like, the, the draft ruined my wedding. You know, and it was just amazing because they were so disappointed. They didn't check to see that, it was, you know, the, the draft was going to be hosted there. So they were so upset, and it was just so incredible. And I loved every second of it. Um, stuff like that makes me happy because they were just, like, so, like, these kind of girls, like, ah. Like, it was the biggest weekend of my life, and it was disgusting. Like, NFL draft everywhere, you know. And I thought that was that was pretty amazing. And then I read this amazing article about Coachella. Dude, Coachella, evidently, around that area, they have the highest rate of uh, herpes than that's ever been. Like, it's herpes central, dude. It's called that Risky Biscuit. That's what I like to call it. That game called Risky Biscuit. I mean, because I guess you're hot, hot and heavy in that moment, right, and... You know, you know, you 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 got you have to look around for that contraceptive. And sometimes it's not around, so they you know a lot of raw dog, you know, and and you know there's consequences for that. But they, you know, but uh, you know this isn't Woodstock, people. This is many years after, man. People been tripping, you know, people like you know not even in love, you know they not using a glove, you know that can lead to some problems, some leakage, you know, some drip, drip. So, you know what, just be careful out there. Saw that, and uh, that was actually going on this weekend, too. Saw that hilarious article about that. So, um, those are some things, actually, that I saw in the news that kind of made me laugh, you know, throughout. And I started, <laughs> and, uh, oh, and I saw this other article that made me mad. Like, this one girl, she was a big vegan, you know. And vegans are cool, they just don't talk about it, like anything. You know, if you do something kind of cool, just... You know, don't push it on people. Or if you have some beliefs, you know, you don't want to come like that against and turn people off. Sometimes vegans do that. You know, I I think I told you I dated a, a vegan atheist one time. Worst purse ever. God, man, I, I would be, I don't think I'd be here right now if that worked out. And that's the thing about the lonely uncle identity. Like, every relationship I dodged or got out of, and even though it wasn't true, true love and meant to last forever, because nothing is last forever, because that was on a Game of Thrones episode two, and that was fire, when he looked at him and he said, you know, looking at Danny and Jon Snow, who was a man during this last episode. Man, I've always been team, team Stark. I'm keeping that. I'm keeping it up. I'm Team Stark, son. Team Stark. But anyway, um... Like I was just kind of saying, uh, you know, before before that, this vegan, this oh my gosh, it would have been terrible. I'd be, I would not be here today. You cannot, 
that's the thing about it, man. I gotta be me. I gotta be my. Fr- I gotta. I gotta keep this spirit alive. And if you, if you try to bring me down or say I can't do this, you know, if I can't, you know, get mine, then there's gonna be a problem. But anyway, I read this article where this woman's a vegan and she has a cat. I like cats, you know, and I don't believe that you're a dog or a cat person. Maybe I do believe that kind of, but you know, I like them both. You know, I like anything like that. They got a lot going on going for them. But anyway, this they were there's a big movement where people were vegans and they're not feeding their cat meat, you know, and you gotta know that cats are carnivores. So these cats are looking struggling. Just because you're pushing this agenda, you know, and you're like, ah, you know, that does not mean that your cat has to be miserable. Don't own a pet. It made me so mad, man, these dumb people. God, they're dumb. I mean, that's great on you, bro. But don't tell, man. It's just, they didn't look, they were having health problems. Like this one cat, it just needed to be put out of its misery. Because this one girl, she was just like, and you know, it's not healthy. Not healthy for you. I mean, you did the research. You can do, it's your prerogative. But man, your little, you know, little pussy cat over there is like, you know, on its last leg. And here you are trying to keep your pride. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that kind of upset the Beef Boy surprise. You know what I'm saying? That kind of made me mad that, uh, you know, that's going on out there in the world today. Um, Man, it was just, a, you know, it's been a, you know, I've had uh, been a, a pretty good week. You know, good good couple weeks, I guess I can say. I've been hitting it hard, getting some work done, um, working on myself a little bit, you know, trying to get back up in it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I'm just looking, I'm looking after you too. Um, I love the love, you know, don't be afraid to hit me up. Um, oh, and it's going to ask you this question, you know, for those that want to participate. Some people like to participate in this. Some people don't. If you are a long, if you're a listener and I, you know what I'm saying? And you just know, you don't want to be acknowledged. That's fine. Just keep listening and keep watching. And, and it's kind of more exciting. Like when you're a teenager, when somebody says you can't do something, you kind of do it. You know, you f- kind of feel like you're rebelling and maybe you don't feel like you should be watching the podcast or, you know, you you ask yourself, why do I watch this or why am I interested? But you do anyway. <laughs> I got you. I got you. And you and you, you kind of sneak off in the corner. Sometimes you, you guys might be, you know, you might be in your bed right before you kind of go to sleep. You, you kind of get it, you know. You basically get out there. You get out that, you get out that HP. Just start her up, download the. You put you put your, you know, you put your uh, earbuds in, because you don't want your husband, or you don't want your, you don't want your uh, wife to hear, because they probably make fun of you or whatever, or say, why do you listen to that? But you do anyway, because we got something here. We got a bond going, baby. We got a bond. Jeez, we got a bond. So No way you'll never make it. You guys have a wonderful week. Love you guys. Take care of yourself. Stay in that pocket, son. Stay in it. No matter what goes around, it might be crumbling. You just stay stern. You stick in that pocket, okay? You don't let them get to you. You know what I'm saying? You stay strong. And reach out if you need anything.